It's a real pleasure to be introducing Rob Worcester and Barry uh, McIntosh from um, uh, Motri Logging. Uh, Rob is the Health and Safety Manager and Barry is the Forestry Claw Production Manager. And they're here to talk today obviously about the Falcon Forestry Claw. There is already one operating in the Mulga Sounds and another about to start in the Onamaluji Valley. There are also several being used by the company in the Nelson area and they're set to have a big impact on how forests are harvested, harvested in our region. Please give Rob and Barry a warm welcome. I'm Rob Worcester and I'm the Health and Safety Manager for Mutri Logging. Uh, Michael came over uh, to Nelson and asked us to do a presentation today about the forestry clause, so uh, I'm going to talk to you about how we got on the on the road to the innovation and then Barry's going to do a presentation in the middle about the development and the building of it and then at the end I'll um, talk about the advantages and disadvantages we've found as we've been using it. Um, so Mutri Logging is a forest uh, management company based in Nelson. We've got eight water crews and two ground bass crews. And uh, two of our water crews work in the North Island, one in Wangarei and one in uh, Rata Heat, just to let you know what we do. So uh, how we sort of got on the road to the innovation, um, really have to go back to 2001 when Mutri Logging was growing really quickly. And we uh, employed a, a, a business manager and the business manager's part of his job was to run the health and safety system. So uh, part of that, doing that job, we started a, a database and we recorded all our incidents and the edits, lost time injuries, and we put it on the database so we could have a look and see in a detailed way uh, what was happening and where the danger points were so we could uh, make a difference. So uh, we found that the incident sort of occurred in three areas. And uh, each of those three areas is, is tree falling, is one of the majors. Breaking out uh, where most of the incidents happen. Breaking out is the, the hooking up of the, of the trees to the to the water ropes to pull the trees to the landing. And the other incidents, the main area was uh, on the landing area. So here's a graph that uh, I put together of the incidents that have happened since 2003 right up until today. So the red line on the graph uh, is the breaking out incidents. So you can see that by far the most incidents happen in the breaking out part of the operation. This sort of goes up and down a bit, but since 2011 it's dropped uh, significantly right down to, uh, to 10 incidents, and that <coughs> corresponds directly with the introduction of the Gulf and Forestry Floor. Because while we're using that, we have no people down the hill at the other lines there is the blue line is tree falling, and the green line is uh, skid work. And there's some troughs and peaks there that sort of correspond with each other and, and um, what happens is when there's a peak in that line it, it's when the forest companies come along and said uh, we've got a, a one-off job we want you to do, pull a crew together and, and usually it's a marginal job, steep country and so we bring some gear out of our other crews and some men, get some men and we go and do the job and at the end of the job we can close the crew down. So those peaks are when we're exposed, more exposed and, um, and also when we're using those, those one-off crews, we don't have all the mechanisation that we have in the main crews, so we don't have mechanical processes, so we go back to motor manual processing. So we get quite a big peak in that skid work incidents when we start those crews up. So what it really shows is that when we have mechanisation, we, we can lower the incidents quite significantly. So what we decided we could make a difference if we, if we uh, were to mechanise the breaking up part of the, the operation. So if we could uh, take the men off the hill, we could significantly reduce the number of instances that happened at breaking out. So this is just a picture to show you a, a drag landing. This is with uh, chains there. This is the old way. So you can see there's quite a big bundle of, of trees there and, and, uh, and it's quite a steep place. So Things slide back down the hill where those guys are standing, so you can see why it's quite dangerous down the hill there. And here's a photo of some breaker out that's hooking some chains on. Give you an idea of what that job's about. There's uh, overhead ropes there, there's chains swinging around, and then there's that, that debris they have to walk across. So typically the ropes get back there, they, they radio the water driver to stop, then they walk in, grab their chains, hook their trees up, and then they walk out, and they get to go ahead. And uh, they've got to watch out for all the hazards that are happening. And what happens is trees swing around and chains break and ropes pin and, and things slide back down the hill and people get hurt. 
So here's another picture of some people on the hill, just to show you that the hill does get clean and stuff. Stuff does roll down the hill towards them. So uh, we decided we we're going to make the difference with this mechanisation, and so we, we started looking around the world at, at what was available as far as mechanisation for breaking out. And, and we found a couple of grapples that we, we brought into our operations and tried. One's called the Eagle Grapple Carriage, that was built, it's quite old technology. Uh, it still required somebody down the hill because it had limited range with the remote controls, and um, so the hauler driver had to be guided in with the, with the radio to the tree. Uh, it was very big and heavy and clumsy and it didn't really work for us. We found another, another carriage called the, the Eagle <coughs> Carriage, much lighter, no engine, and it used ropes to close the grapple. But uh, needed a spring to open the grapple and the spring never worked down the hill, so we had to keep bringing that carriage back to the top to open the grapple every time, but very slow. <coughs> so after all of this we decided, well, the best thing we can do is design and build our own grapple. So we, we wrote down some specifications. And in, in September last year, we went off to Barry and said, uh, Barry, we want you to build this carriage. So, pass you over to Barry and you'll tell you through that <coughs> process. Thanks, Rob. G'day, um, I'm Barry McIntosh and I manage uh, DC Repairs, uh, which is a mechanical and, and engineering um, business in Nelson. Um, in 2000, September 2011, we were asked uh, by Mutri Logging to design a prototype uh, grapple carriage. It had to be lightweight, uh, remotely operated, and uh, having a camera on it so we didn't need any guys down the hill. It had to be a robust design and able to carry uh, multiple trees in the grapple. Um, we designed a new hydraulic system to suit an engine that we already had and a grapple that we had out of an old carriage. We completed uh, the prototype by the end of uh, October 2011. Here we have a, a picture of our, our first prototype carriage. Um, as you can see, it's pretty basic. It's just a square box, really, um, built around the engine and components. On top, we have the, the pulleys, or sheaves, they're called. So it's quite a narrow sheave. Um, only really enough room just for the the skyline rope to go through. On the on the front there, this little white panel we can just see, that's the aerial that uh, relays all the information up to the hauler. Um, and we've also got the hoses coming out the, out the bottom, around the side to the grapple, which are a little bit exposed. Um, we've got a short little uh, film here of the carriage working, it just does one drag. We can get it to go. It's not going to go. It's not going to happen. It's a shame. You know how to go? Yeah, not a computer guy. Oh, well, um, anyway. So, uh, yeah, that's our, our first carriage. Um, we then uh, looked, we had some issues with the with our prototype course, being the uh, first one we did. Um, the grapple that we had on there was, uh, we could only, it was a sort of a scissor type grapple, and we could only fit. Um, Sort of one to two trees in it, and it wouldn't roll the trees up properly when it when it grabbed them. So we looked at designing a, a lightweight, um, more of a bunching type grapple that could carry a, a better load. Uh, we had to redesign the carriage frame, um, make it a bit smaller, and uh, yeah, just make it more compact and a little bit lighter. We also redesigned the sheaves on the top as well. Um, we also had to source a, a lightweight engine and, uh, and new hydraulic pumps and things. So here we have a picture of the the second one we did with the modifications. We've got a, um, a bit of bunch and grapple on there. Um, also in the front, so with the aerial that's on the front, uh, it's, it's aims because it's a directional aerial, it aims more 
directly at the hauler to get a better, better reception. Um, the camera sits just under the front, of it, under the bottom of the front there. And also the sheaves on the top um, are a wider sheave so that we can uh, go over a, a rollover shack or if we've got a join in the skyline. So um, it makes it uh, a lot more versatile. <coughs> <coughs> and this video is probably not going to go either. No. <coughs> um, yep. Yeah. 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 Basically, the carriage is just running like we're flying fox um, on the skyline right down the hill. <coughs> In this, this situation here, we've the wood's been bunched, we've had a digger, you might see the digger shortly on the hill, and that's been uh, just bunching the, the wood there, so it's reasonably easy going, we can put, you know, put a few more trees in the, in the gravel that way. Can't always do that, of course, on steep country. The so hauler driver's operating this wholly and solely from the cab, and he's just looking through the camera in the, on, the, uh, on the machine. Source. Um, the engine's a 28.5 horsepower air-cooled Kohler diesel engine. Um, Changes we had to make to the engine, we had to put a bigger volume um, sump on it and a swinging oil pickup on it so that we can work on steeper angles. Um, as you can see, when it, when it comes up the hill, it's, it's you know, leaning back quite a bit. And also down the hill, when they drop it down onto the trees, you know, it can flop over from side to side. Um, and we also had to fit a, a hydraulic controlled throttle as well for revving up and, 
and uh, going back to an idle, and we had tip over sensors put in just in case it does fall over or upside down or whatever, it doesn't um, run out of oil and wreck the engine and, and hydraulic pumps. Hydraulic system, uh, the pump we run is a Casapa pump made in Italy, rated to 5,000 psi. Um, the system's only running at 3,000 max, so um, it's working well it's in, it, in its capacity. Um, that's operating the, the grapple underneath, which is a rotator, have a rotator motor on that that can swing 360 degrees um, both ways, left and right. Um, also have the grapple ram, uh, which closes with a force of about 29 tonnes. The ram also has a regen valve in the back of the ram. Um, this basically just speeds the, the closing time of the grapple up. Um, so we can now have have the grapple go from fully open to close in about 3.5 seconds. So that's a big help. Um, sometimes you get a bit of a, uh, a, a wave in the rope as such. So um, as you drop the carriage down, um, you get it down over the trees and the carriage can be sort of, have a bit of a bounce in it. So I can go up doing this and uh, if the grapple is very close, uh, slow to close, um, you go down over the tree and you push the button to close it and of course it bounces up and then you miss it. So yeah, it's just a, it's just a time thing really. Um, here's a picture of the, the camera. It's an air cam infrared camera. And um, that sits just in the, in the front underneath. Just looks at the little, little hole there and aims back at the, at the grapple. Um, pretty basic. Uh, control system. Um, we have a video transmitter um, that transmits on 2.4 gigs. Uh, aerials are 18 decibel directional aerial on the front of the carriage, and that sends the video uh, information back to the hauler. Um, and we also have an on screen display that we're, we haven't got on an order at the moment, but we've we just put in, and that gives us GPS location of the carriage. Um, it also gives us an altitude um, and a distance from the hauler as well. So it'll say that you're 227 metres away from from the hauler, so it's a good thing for the operator to have, um, so he knows that the last read was at 227, so you know, it needs to go back to 228 or something. Um, just another tool, really. It's also got um, sensors in there, so we can hook up oil temperature, hydraulic temperature, and stuff like that. And that's all overlaid on the, on the video screen. Um, this is just the, the picture of the <coughs> grapple closed up and the, the knuckle in between. In, the, uh, in these hinge points, we have a piston brake system in there, uh, and that's just got a piece, well, a piece of brake material in there, and you pump it up with grease, and that puts pressure on and slows the swing of the gravel down. Because um, yeah, if you don't have that in there, it's, it's very floppy and flops around, and makes it harder <coughs> to control and pick trees up. Um, you can also see the hoses going through the centre of that pivot as well. <coughs> the first prototype, they, the hoses come out the side and they're always getting hooked up with branches and stuff like that. So they go straight up to the centre and that also allows it to rotate 360 degrees as well. Um, the little yellow and red cartridge you can see just on the top there, top left there, that's our fire suppression system. Um, just a little canister in there and that just goes off automatically if the temperature gets above 110 degrees. Uh, it's just got a little, little sensor on the top there, so it shouldn't really be needed, but uh, it's just another safety um, advantage, really. This is just a picture of our, not a very good picture, um, of our one of our water cabs. And you see the 16 inch uh, monitor there. Um, so the operator's just looking at that, and of course, out the window and things. Uh, down the bottom right, we've just got a little control box here, very simple toggle switches. Uh, you've got one just to left and right for your rotate, um, open and close for your grapple, and then there's a start and stop for your engine. Uh, progress of the carriages. We continue to, to, uh, to build the carriages uh, number two through to number six with minimal um, changes. Um, number seven, We've built, uh, we've 
got all our hy hydraulic components um, basically into one manifold block and this has reduced the amount of hosing from about 33 hoses in the carriage down to about 13 so it's simplified things a lot and uh, yeah, got it sort of running better. We've also done other improvements as well, uh, got rid of some of our electrical um, pressure switches and things like that which were causing a few issues. Uh, problems we had to overcome uh, in the early days, downtime created by, by the carriages, um, of course when it's a new thing we've all, always got little niggles happening and um, yeah, we had a few you know, issues to overcome with those. Uh, de development while we were in operation, um, we are trying to develop and try new things while the, uh, while the guys were, were working and trying to pull their you know, target bits and then a tonne per day. So that was a bit of a challenge. Um, of course, learning as we were as we were going, it was all of the stuff was quite new to us. Um, so yeah, we had to learn as we go, and, and uh, it was it was a lot of fun, though, so quite an enjoyable thing to do. Um, and we also had to grow our business to cope with the workload. Uh, in the last year, we've 12 months ago we had about 11 staff. Um, now we're up to about 17, so we've grown quite rapidly. Uh, achievements and improvements, um, automated hauler controls is, is one of our next steps. Um, we're going to, we're looking at um, having, a, having a computer more, uh, sorry, a hauler more computerised um, so we can possibly just push a button to send a carriage down to, you know, 300 metres down the hill or whatever. Um, and it'll automatically do that and automatically in haul as well without the operator having to do it manually. Um, another thing we've been thinking about is, a, is a, another, a, like a slash grapple for cleaning up gullies and things like that. Um, it's quite handy, quite easy to drop it down into a gully and grab a heap of rubbish out and, and clean it out for, to uh, yeah, keep the environment a happier place. Um, also, one other thing we've been thinking about is a bunching grapple. The grapple, what we've got on there, I've been calling it a bunching grapple, which it's, it sort of rolls the trees up and bunches them better. There are grapples out there that um, can hang on to one tree as well as grabbing another one. Um, so that's one thing we've sort of been thinking of as well. And we're also looking into the felling side of things, um, whether we can incorporate a felling um, ahead onto, onto it somehow uh, and give that a crack. Um, this is the joystick controls. We've just done one of our haulers, and um, it's not a really good picture. It's yeah, you've got one joystick on either side. That's just the left hand one, um, and this has made it a lot more user friendly, easier to operate. Uh, I've got a picture here of the the older uh, all the cabs. As you can see, there's a lot more valves and clutches and switches and everything. So the guys, you know pretty flat out with his hands operating things, so the joysticks certainly make it a lot easier. Alright, making the changes. So that's me, thanks very much. I'll pass it back to Rob and he can uh, carry on. After we had these carriages working for a while, we decided we should uh, do a bit of a study and see actually how they're performing. So we went along to the Canterbury University and we, we asked a couple of um, following year students if they'd come along and, and help us do a time of motion study. So they actually came along in their holidays um, during the year and, and made it part of their, uh, their project at the end of the year. So because they haven't finished the year, we don't actually have all the information uh, from that study, but we do have some. But, you know, that, that was really good when we come to do that. So we found that uh, they, stu they studied uh, the graph was working and, and then they also studied some manual breaking out as well so they could do a bit of a comparison. And we found that the bunched and feed wood was significantly more um, 
more productive for the carriage. Downtime was one of the main problems uh, for the carriage at the start. We, we actually had 57% downtime with the carriages when they were doing the study. <coughs> but the carriage, carriages still average 33 tonne an hour, which is actually slightly better than, than manual breaking out. And, and bunched wood, as you saw uh, with the video that Barry showed, that bunched wood added an extra 9 tonne an hour on top of the 33. And if we were to feed the gravel with the digger, we could add an 18 tonne on top of that 33 tonne an hour. Now one of the other things that we, we figured out is that we, we can change the way we log with the carriage because there's no men down the hill. There's a whole lot of things we can do now that we didn't used to be able to do. And um, we need to work, and also we need to change the way we, we set up the, the infrastructure of the forest so that we can use the carriages. And to do that we have to work with the forest owners and the, and the managers and planners. And uh, we work with mostly Nelson Pine Industries and Hancocks and a little bit with Nelson Forest and they will be really supportive and actually given us a lot of leniency with our productions and given us extra extra volume to, um, to develop this carriage. And they're on board also helping us, they'll come to us for blocks now and say, uh, where do you want your skid sites to make this carriage work? Because there's a lot of advantages for them to having it working as well with uh, less incidents and um, probably better value for recovery. So some of the things that we can do with the carriage is um, we can reduce the amount of time that the trees are felled. Uh, in the past, uh, when you get a big steep face and we need to put ropes across the hill, you need to fell that whole face to make it safe for those people who work on the hill because you can't fall above the ropes and you can't pull above the fallers because the debris will come down on those guys. But now we can root the ropes below the fallers and it doesn't matter if the tree slips down with no one there. So we can actually get closer to the felling face with the ropes and reduce the amount of time that it's down. Cleaning out gullies is quite a big thing. When you're falling on a steep place, uh, a lot of the, the trees and bits and pieces all slide down into the gully, and some of those gullies are quite big canyons, take a long time to walk in and out to hook a drag over. <coughs> so when you're cleaning out those gullies manually, it can take 15 minutes to walk in and hook a drag up and walk out again and, and be safe to pull that tree. So th they start leaving some of the smaller bits behind, and, and so you don't get as clean a job as you could. But with the carriage, uh, the water operator can see through the camera all that stuff in the gully and he can just as easily drop the carriage into the gully as he can on the side of the hill. So you get a much better clean out of those gullies, we just clean it right out. Now, working the ropes differently on the slopes is another big thing. In the past uh, you have to be very careful about where you set your ropes up and, and bites in the rope and, and I've got a, a plan on here I'll show you in a minute. Um, we can actually work from the bottom up now, whereas we always used to work from the top down because you can't have any work standing under the ropes. We can work that way if we want to. We can put ropes anywhere we want without have to consider the safety of people. So that's a, a whole new way of thinking. So the advantage is definitely safety is the, the biggie. Um, the bird's eye view from the camera for the horn operator is a big thing for him and he's able to do a much better job and clean the hill up much better. He can uh, see all of the trees there. Um, smaller drags is, is probably actually helps with breakage. When you get those big drags with chains, you get five or six trees get all getting pulled in different directions. Quite often you, you'll break one as you're pulling them out because the influence of the others as they pull together. But when you're pulling one at a time or two at a time you, and you're doing more cycles, uh, you tend to break less. But also the, the um, the hauler driver can actually see the tension coming onto the trees when he's breaking it out and can change the way he does it so he reduces that breakage so you get more full stems coming to the land. Other advantage is um, we can actually, we've got a crew now working uh, uh, 14 hours a day, the hauler works 14 hours a day so the main crew starts at 6 in the morning and work through to 3 and we have a, a night shift comes on or a late shift, they start at uh, 11 o'clock and work through to 8, 8 o'clock at night, just two people. One hauler driver and one person to clear the chute, and they just keep working with lights on in the dark or it's not so bad in the summer. And so we can increase the number of hours we work those machines um, with very little extra expense. There's a couple of disadvantages, uh, and knowing for the new workers to start is quite a big one because in the past we've always started the new guys in the breaking out part because he can be supervised one on one with the other guy a good place to learn about how the, how the uh, operation works. We don't really have that opportunity anymore, so we've got to really think hard about 
how we're going to get new people into the, into the industry. Because nearly every job now has to be skilled. You have to be skilled at the job. And the other thing is that men are coming up for breaking out because uh, as much as we try, we still can't do every single, every single place with a carriage. These places where the ground just doesn't allow us to get lift to work them. And so when it comes to a place where we have to send some breaker out down the hill, we've got to be careful with him with a bunch of fatties. Haven't got the fitness to go down and do the job, so we have to be careful about how we manage that as well. 